Hi, Robert Medlin here. Uh, about 20 years ago, I had a, a dream, and in the dream, uh, the Lord Jesus wrote on a yellow legal pad two words, and those words were substitution and service. And, and really, that became the foundation of my ministry. Uh, it's the foundation of my life. Uh, and it's really not some unique and uh, revelation that's new and hidden. Uh, it's, it's really the story of the Bible, and it's the story of Jesus. Uh, it's the story of our salvation. And so uh, just the way that the Lord gave that to me on a le yellow legal pad, this is, this is the, the, the legal requirements <laughs> of Christianity and our relationship with him. Well, really, uh, in the book of, of uh, Revelation, uh, Jesus is called the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world in Revelation 13. Jesus was the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world before uh, the universe was ever created, before the heavens and the earth were created. Uh, before Jesus, we know that Jesus created all things uh, before he came to earth in a human body, but before the creation of all the things that we see, uh, in both the in in both our natural realm and in the heavenly realms as well, uh, God planned to have Jesus come and be the Lamb of God, uh, who took away the sins of the world, the Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the world, and so uh, that was God's plan from the beginning that Jesus would be our substitute. Uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, uh, in in the book of Genesis, we find that when Adam and Eve uh, surrendered their authority to Satan, and the, who is the arch, archangel uh, Lucifer, who who despised the fact that God had had created this man and woman out of dirt, uh, and given him the position of ruling over heaven and earth, and so uh, the the serpent uh, Satan tricked Adam and Eve into obeying him, and to and to doing what he said, and so really that put him in authority over Adam and Eve, so they were evicted from the Garden of Eden. And, and the first thing that God did was he slew an animal. And uh, it was probably a lamb. Slew a lamb and he, and he made garments of the skin of the animal and covered them uh, with the garments of this slain animal. And so that was a picture of Jesus, uh, us being clothed with Jesus, clothed with his life, uh, that he has become our substitute. And this lamb became their substitute. And so they were receiving the revelation that they had about Jesus at the time. And so all throughout the Old Testament, uh, as as God would reveal himself, would reveal Jesus as the Lamb of God, uh, slain from the foundation of the world, uh, slain for our sins, uh, that uh, that people were accepting this 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 um, this salvation message of substitution. And so uh, so Adam and Eve accepted that garment. They they knew that a life had to be given for their lives. And so they accepted that garment. Adam and Eve's children, uh, Cain and Abel, uh, they were given the same opportunity to, to accept uh, a life given for their life, a life substituted for their life. And so Cain brought, uh, at, at, first of all, Abel brought his sacrifice, which was he slew an animal and brought the sacrifice of that animal to the Lord. And the Lord was pleased with that sacrifice. But Cain was, uh, he was uh, the new ager of, of his day. And uh, Cain just despised uh, uh, the fact of, of having to slay an animal. It just, it just didn't sit right with him. Uh, and really, it's the foundation of all the other religions beside Christianity, is that we can be saved by human works. And so, Cain, Cain brought the produce of his garden, the produce of his works, the fruit of his works, to God. And so that's really what all the religions and all the people who really aren't religious, they're doing is they're they're living their life based on their works on their human works and so uh, he brought that to God and God rejected it and didn't receive that sacrifice and so Cain was so angry at his brother uh, Abel that he slew Abel and sacrificed him and actually uh, sacrificed his own brother and so uh, Cain became the first rejecter of the message of substitution and so uh, uh, Abel is actually mentioned in the heroes of faith in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11 so that's really been the message all along, even before Jesus came. It was a preview of Jesus coming. Uh, they, uh, Abraham uh, was told to go and sacrifice a ram uh, and, and, uh, or to sacrifice his son uh, who was given to him by promise Isaac. Uh, so Abraham 
went up to sacrifice Isaac uh, as a as a as a picture of Jesus coming, God sacrificing His own Son. Abraham didn't know that, but only, the only thing Abraham knew was if God told him to sacrifice Isaac, that he had the power to raise him from the dead. So, so Abraham took Isaac up to the mountain, was getting ready to sacrifice him, and then God provided a lamb, a ram, uh, in exchange. So God provided a substitute for Isaac, and and it was a lamb. So so Abraham was able to sacrifice uh, the ram <clears throat> as a substitute for Isaac. So that was a picture of Jesus coming as well, God providing his own son as our substitute. And so, um, and then we have the law of Moses where, where all the different sacrifices were given. There was this, there was the Passover lamb that was slain to, to, uh, to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And when the angel of death saw the blood on the doorpost, he passed over the, the homes of the Israelites, but, but the homes of the Egyptians who were enslaving and mistreating the Israelites, uh, uh, the firstborn son was killed, and so that that caused Pharaoh to release and to release the people from bondage, and so that was a picture of Jesus, the Passover Lamb. Jesus was actually uh, crucified on Passover, and then we have all the sacrifices in the law, uh, the guilt offering, the sin offering, the fellowship offerings. All these offerings that were made were just pictures of offering a sacrifice for our own failures, and so. Uh, uh, and then in Isaiah 53, uh, God says, uh, uh, made this 700 years before Jesus came, God declares uh, about the coming of Jesus and said, said that uh, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punish he was pierced for our transgressions. This is Isaiah 53. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brings us peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord has laid on him. The iniquity of us all as our substitute and so uh, this this is the message really of the gospel it's the message of the cross uh, so uh, in the uh, in the book of uh, of Romans we find in Romans chapter 5 you know we're 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 told that, that through Adam's sin through Adam's transgression death came to all men but through but uh, but how much more will those who receive the gift of righteousness and and the abundance of grace reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So we, we reign, we, we live and reign in life through Jesus, just like we, we all came under the curse and under the subjection of the devil and the curse uh, through subjection to, to Lucifer, to Satan. Uh, we, we come under subject and subjection to Jesus and we reign as kings and priests in life. And that was God's plan, is that, is that we will rule and reign with Jesus forever. Uh, Jesus came. Uh, Jesus was already God. He came in human form to be our substitute, so that we could rule and reign with Him forever and ever as kings and priests on His throne. What an awesome plan of substitution! So uh, it goes on in Romans chapter five to say that through the obe through the disobedience of the one man, uh, the many became sinners, and through the obedience of the one man, the, the many were made righteous. And through the diso through the through the disobedience of the one man uh, uh, we all came under the curse and and uh, but when we uh, through the obedience of the one man uh, that we're all justified and made righteous and so uh, it was through this this concept of substitution um, so what is what is uh, service well service is just Jesus doing his work through us, just Jesus living his life through us. The Bible says that when we accepted Jesus as our Lord, that we died and our life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is our life appears, we will also appear with him in glory. We, so we died when we accepted Jesus. Christ is our life now. So we died, our life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is our life appears, we will also appear with him in glory. And then uh, also that uh, that's in... Uh, Colossians chapter three, in uh, in Galatians uh, chapter two, it says that that uh, uh, that that you Paul says I was crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live through faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Jesus is living in us, doing His works, and that's that's our service. Our service. Uh, Jesus gets the glory for everything uh, we get. We give Him great glory when we honor him and keep our eyes on him and what he's done for us uh, human nature is to try to 
try to do things ourselves, you know, and try to work and, and be good enough to get into heaven and, you know, all that, all of that kind of thing. Well, that's just, that's just human works and that's not going to get anyone into heaven. Uh, but it, but the Bible does, uh, but, but, but Jesus does give uh, uh, those through the New Testament uh, instructions about the law uh, uh, to to restrain us to rest- when we first become a Christian, the law restrains us. Uh, although we find out that we can't keep it, so uh, so Jesus has 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 done everything for us, and so our service is just letting Him uh, do His work through us, and so which He does, and so He He sheds His love through us. He He loves people through us. Uh, he sheds His gift through us. He heals people through us. Uh, he he encourages people through us. It's just Jesus doing it, and so we. Uh, the only thing that will count in heaven is is what Jesus did through us, and so uh, the rest of it is just wood, hay, and stubble, and so it doesn't really count. So so Jesus has done it all for us. Our service is just letting Him live His life through us, and and He does that. So uh, uh, it's a glorious plan of, of salvation that Jesus became our substitute that he lived his life for us and to do the things that we couldn't do. He ruled over the devil, the things that we can't do. He, he, uh, he, he destroyed, uh, he was, he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Uh, Jesus healed the sick. He raised the dead. He stilled the storms. He feed, fed the multitudes. Jesus did what, what, what we're supposed to do, but he did that in our place. And then when he died on the cross, he took our sins on his own body, uh, it took the judgment for our sins on his own body, descended into hell for us as our substitute. He was raised from the dead for us as our substitute. We can't raise ourselves from the dead. Jesus was raised from the dead as our substitute. He ascended into heaven for us. And so it's all about Jesus. It's not about us. And what a great message. It's really the message of the cross. It's really the, the message of the Bible. It's the message of the New Testament. It's all about Jesus. And uh, God bless you and have a great day.